Welcome to the Channel Chat Podcast. Hello, I'm Mark Sumner, host of the Channel Chat Podcast show, and today I have the privilege of Emma D'Souza, President of Amir for Insight in the Virtual Studio. How are we doing, Emma? Very well, thank you. Great to see you. Thank you for having me on today. Yeah, thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on. I've, I've hounded you for six months yeah. to come on, so finally you've got some time in your diary because I'm a very busy person. You're busy times for us all, right? <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, isn't it just? Isn't it just? Emma, I really wanted to kick off today with your career because um, I noticed that you sort of started at Insight, was it 19 years 19 ago? 19 years ago, Is yes, right? 19 years in June, in my anniversary in June. And you get, and obviously you've got to the top spot now, um, uh, president of the, of the EMEA. But I'm hoping you can sort of take us back and get us, get us through that journey. So what role did you start off in, in Insight 19 years ago? So I started off as a sales manager in our Sheffield office. And actually, you know, when I remember clearly the day when I arrived for my interview, so I walked through the doors of the Sheffield office. Someone had just closed the deal. They were ringing the bell. Everyone was on their feet, clapping and cheering. And I fell in love with the energy and, and the warmth of, of the culture, I suppose, at, at Insight there from that very first moment. So I was fortunate. I got the opportunity. And yes, I, I started my career as a sales manager in the Sheffield office. And then... Go on, sorry, so, and was it part of the culture that you fell in love with as well? Because you, you mentioned before we were offline that, that culture was a big part of your decision making. And obviously, you stayed there for so long. So... You know, was it culture, obviously, there straight away Absolutely. as well? Absolutely. And I think, you know, just, just that passion, that sense of warmth and energy that I got, you know, those first five minutes of, of being on that sales floor was pretty incredible. And then the more I got to know the organization, and obviously over the last 19 years, we have evolved and developed the culture into something that we're all incredibly proud of. We've got very clear values as an organization. We've got three core values of hunger, heart, and harmony, and they underpin everything that we do, literally, with, within the organization. So I think, yeah, I felt the culture immediately when I walked through the doors and you know it's just gone on to you know go from strength to strength ever since. And what inspired you to get into tech, Emma? What, you didn't have a tech background before. I didn't before, have a tech you? background before now I had quite a quite a different background beforehand. And I think you know the thing that's always appealed to me and continues to appeal to me about technology is the difference that we can make you know you know technology is always changing nothing stands still i love the pace of technology i love the vibrancy of of the channel you know that there's so much there to to keep anybody interested to keep us on our toes to to keep us challenging ourselves and constantly growing and and evolving and i suppose once you're in it you kind of get addicted to it um, so it was that passion to to want to make a difference and and be part of an environment that was energized and energizing and, and vibrant and where I thought I could add value mm. and so you started your old office as sales manager in Sheffield yeah. then take me on after there how, how did you how did you move on from well, there I think the first thing probably to say is that I was fortunate because I had a really great mentor um, in the the managing director of the UK at that time he saw potential in in me I was you know very keen to work hard and prove to myself as well as the organization what I was capable of doing <clears throat> um, and you know he sponsored me throughout so I, I went from being a sales manager to a sales director when we first started to invest in our Manchester operation and you know to, right. to, to something you said to me offline but I couldn't believe I was a director you know I never thought I'd be a director. So I thought I, you know, got this opportunity in the Manchester office. I moved my life to Manchester, and I, I thought that was it for me. I was, you know, super happy with the opportunity and wanted to to invest and grow that Manchester operation. But soon after that, Insight acquired Software Spectrum which was a uh, global software organization with a significant footprint in Europe outside of the UK. So at that point, and you know, I'd only been in Manchester maybe six or eight months, and I got the phone call to say, we'd like you to go to Munich at uh, wow. European operations, which was terrifying, you know, at that moment in time. Oh. And I just found my life in Manchester. I was quite happy there. Um, but... 
I was in a fortunate position because at that time it, it was just me. There was nothing to stop me relocating to Germany, which I did. And I loved it. And, you know, through all my energy at that opportunity to, to learn about operations, to learn about the different European cultures that I was now working as, as part of a pan-European team and the richness that you get from, you know, that engagement with, with different cultures was really rewarding. So I spent just over 12 months, maybe 14 months in Munich. And then I was promoted to be vice president of Southern Europe. So relocated to Paris, which again, a bit of a culture shock. It was a culture shock going from the UK to Germany, but then from Germany to France was, you know, an, another cultural change for me. But again, absolutely loved it. I had the opportunity there to work with the teams in France, Spain and Italy. Uh, which was extremely rewarding. Together, we, you know, we delivered a lot of success. So I had a great time out there. And then I returned back to run the UK business, uh, I guess, 18 months or so after that. So been in the UK ever since, um, running the, the UK team, working with a fantastic leadership team in the UK, really focused on you know, the growth and transformation of the business, but also the culture and, and the people, which is a massive part of what we do at Insight. Um, so yeah, I've been doing that for a while. I had maternity leave twice, because I am a working mum, uh, two daughters. And um, yeah, just really, really fortunate now to be in a position where I get to, to run the whole of Europe. You, you mentioned there about mentors quite early on. How important do you think it is is it to have a mentor that sees you, you know, your, your success and helps you up the, the career ladder? Because you, you, there's one thing doing a great job, mm -hmm. but there's also one thing being recognised for a good job and actually being pulled up to the next job in, in, in front yeah. of you. So how was, it, how was it important for you to have that mentor? Do you know what, Mark? It was really important for me because I think like a lot of people, I, I always wanted to work hard. I, I've always worked and continue to work incredibly hard, but I'm probably not much of a self-promoter. And I think lots of people yeah. find themselves in, in that position. And, you know, I've heard you on these chats before with, with other people, especially when you talked a lot about women in tech. And, you know, there's almost a reluctance there to you know, put yourself out there too much or, or maybe even to, to realize your own potential. So, you know, th there's always a risk that if we don't look for the talent in people and we don't, and as leaders in particular, having those development conversations, identifying people's skills and expertise and their ambitions and desires is so important because you will miss it otherwise. I think you know having a mentor is key, but being a mentor is also important. Um, so yeah, I, I would say it's absolutely essential and we've all got to support each other, look for each other's strengths, support each other, you know, where we've got areas that we're not so confident confident or competent so that everyone has the opportunity to fulfill their potential yeah because there's a lot of times and i've heard about it on the when i've done these chats that there'll be a a, a female candidate or a male candidate and the male candidate <laughs> will apply for everything they'll just apply whether they can speak german they can speak french but it doesn't matter if they see the role and it's more money they normally just apply yeah. for it whereas female candidates are very hesitant with that they don't they might have thought so for instance the opportunity you got to work in Germany, they might have thought, oh, you know, I haven't run country or I don't speak Germany or do I want to relocate? They're much more cautious. How can we encourage women to be much more adventurous in applying for those roles? Because if they don't get a, 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 or be recognised in the, in the industry, they do just maybe stay where they are. And they don't move when, when really they are competent to do the job, probably over the men, the male candidates. Possibly, possibly. And, and do you know what? I think it impacts everybody, not just women, right? We, we, we have to be careful not to overgeneralise. But I can assure you of this. If, if when I was in Manchester in my sales director role, I had have seen the position for EMEA operations director advertising, I would never have considered it in a million years. So, you know, I'm living proof that there is so much value in having 
mentorship and, and having a sponsor to help push you forward and, and drive you and actually to push you way outside of your comfort zone sometimes. And it's something that I try and live by myself. And I've got examples of, you know, members of my team today and, and previous teams where I've done just that. And I've encouraged them to, to take that leap of faith, you know, to, to believe in me that I'm giving them an opportunity that I know they can succeed at, even if they are you know, maybe reluctant or, or or don't have the confidence to push themselves forward. So I, I think it's so important that we, yeah, we, we nurture people. That's the role of leaders, right? To look for people's potential, to develop them, to push people to grow, because very often people won't push themselves. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you came back from Paris, you came back to the head up the UK. Tell me about that, that move. So you'd obviously got a lot of experience by then. You were probably pretty competent and confident in both roles. So uh, tell me about the UK experience. Yes, well, do you know what? It was another bold move. It was another, you know, scary step. And, and the reason being is that then and, and still today, the UK is a significant part of Insight's European business. Um, you know, Insight in the UK has a very strong hardware business. And when we moved into Europe, it was as a result of that acquisition of software spectrum and so the majority of our business in those countries then was software and, and some software related services so the UK was a bigger business and it was a much bigger business than I had run previously so although I was going back onto home turf so to speak it was still for me a significant step um, so I still went through all of those emotions, you know, starting over again, got to prove yourself again, try and build credibility with the team, prove that you can do the job and lead them competently. And, you know, I'm not sure that ever changes. I think, you know, what experience gives you is the light at the end of the tunnel. It does give you confidence that you can deliver you can achieve but i think when you start any new role you still go through all of those emotions all over again you know can i do it you know how do i prove myself yeah. you, you know i think that's part of wanting to succeed you know i think that's human nature and you know that's probably what enables us to get to the positions that we get to ultimately did you so you really did you really feel that you had to pr you prove yourself again even though you've been successful in germany and paris you've gone to the uk yeah. you thought i've got to prove myself yes again? of course but I think, yeah. I mean, I presume lots of people feel that way, right? But of course you do. And, and I suppose, you know, in what we do in leadership roles, every day is a different set of challenges. And you can end every day feeling that you've done a great job and you can end days thinking there are things you should have done better. And, and you know, I, I do wonder if it's that constant reflection and self-awareness that, you know, propels you to, to continue to develop and grow and, and want to be the best version of yourself, ultimately. Yeah. And what was the next move after that, Emma, once you'd got you landed in the UK so, well, and you'd be and you you'd been successful? Yeah, so I'd I'd been running the UK at, at a point in time, my role expanded to look after Northern Europe as well, which again was great because I got to got to work with the teams in Sweden and Norway and Denmark as they were then, which again was another cultural challenge in the best possible way but you know new things to learn different approaches to adapt to and, and so on um, so, th so that was exciting then I took maternity leave and you know came back from maternity leave just to focus on the UK then because my life had changed as it does for many people when you know they they start a family, men and, and women, you know, yeah. the world's a little bit different. And, you know, again, maybe you doubt yourself again, you know, maybe you doubt whether you can step back into such a big role. And I was really fortunate at the time because I had a leader and a leadership team that were incredibly supportive in terms of helping me ease back into the business, get myself back up to speed and, and to a position where I was confident I could, you know, get back in the saddle and lead that business to where it needed to go. So again, I think there's an important role for leaders to play in helping people transition back into the business after periods of leave. Um, I then a couple of years ago picked up EMEA marketing as part of my expanded responsibility. So still had the UK business, which was thriving at that time. And again, all credit to the fantastic team that I had around me. Um, but the European marketing role gave me the 
opportunity to work with the different countries again, which I just loved. And then, yes, as of January, I stepped into the EMEA role, which is just terrific. Absolutely. Yeah, fantastic. I, you know, I count my blessings every day. It's a, it's a great opportunity for me. Yeah, congratulations on that. Um, let, let me just ask you, what are the main differences now? You obviously, you've run a country and now you're running EMEA. What's the main differences between running the two? Because they've obviously got to come with different challenges. Uh, yeah, they, they do. You know, they, they naturally do. And I think, um, you know, the, the businesses are, are actually different in their makeup. You know, we've got different sizes of business. We've got different capabilities across the countries. I think what helps is that we have a common strategy. And we're very clear in terms of what that strategy means for us as a business. Every teammate understands the strategy and the initiatives, if you like, that underpin that strategy and, and the value that every teammate, we call our employees teammates, that every teammate contributes to the success of the business. And I think, you know, having that overarching approach is really valuable to people. I think the other thing that that guides us, you know, those three values of hunger, heart and harmony. You speak to anybody within our organisation and they will tell you our culture is really important and our values are what guides us. And I think, you know, the, the last 12 months have probably been some of the most challenging that any of us have ever faced. And one of the key learnings for us has been those values are everything they're our anchor point they are the things that you know bring us together that regardless of whether it's one country or multiple countries they give us that togetherness that solidarity and that sense of camaraderie that i think we've all been craving for over the course of the last 12 months right we've all had this common enemy enemy in coronavirus and the pandemic it doesn't matter which country you're sitting in so you know, for me, I think it's, yes, there are a different set of challenges, but I think, you know, having one team and, and one clear strategy and, and set of goals and objectives will ultimately help us succeed going forward. And how have you maintained culture when you've had to do this sort of work from home strategy? And and, and have you have you been able to sort of like implement different cultures across the mere? Because You've not been able to travel, I guess. You've you yeah. never been able to sort of travel in country back to work from home, juggling family yeah. as well. So how have, you, how have you adapted and how have you sort of found the, the culture piece at Inside and maybe sort of to make sure it's implemented correctly? Yeah, and, and do you know what? As I said, I think it's been so important. It's always important to us, but the last 12 months, it, it it's become everything. It's been central to everything that we've done. And, you know, taking care of each other, looking out for each other has been a significant part of what we've done. I mean, we've always put teammates' health and well-being as our number one priority, but it's meant something different in the last 12 months. And you're right, it, it is different across different countries. I mean, you look at the UK today, the vaccine rollout is going extremely well. We're starting yeah. to see light at the end of the tunnel when life might start to get back to some kind of normality. At the same time, I've got teammates in Italy that have just gone back into lockdown for the third time. And if you remember, sure. the Italians were the first people to go into lockdown in Europe in, in the first place when you know COVID first yeah. hit the region. So it's really, really tough. And I think you know, we, we've done a lot like many organizations around mental well-being, physical well-being, financial well-being. But I think to some extent it's been the small touches that have made a difference. It's been yeah, you know, communication has been key, making sure that we've got the team meetings, the all hand sessions. But you know what? Sometimes it's just been picking up the phone to a teammate and saying, do you know what? There's no agenda, but how are you doing? How are your kids today? What's it feeling like in your part of Europe today? You know, what's the sentiment? What's the mood? And I can tell you, I have had some of the most incredible conversations with teammates that you know, I've probably barely ever spoken to before. You know, there are 1,800 teammates across Europe. So you can pick up the phone and speak to someone you've never spoken to before and you find yourself talking about gardening or, you know, the best technique for covering up your grey hairs, whatever it might be. But do you know what? It makes a difference. It lightens the mood and it, it shows 
teammates that you care. And we have done a lot of that over the last 12 months. And, you know, we've, we've got external recognition for that as well. You picked up on some of it by LinkedIn before. We've got, we've won awards for diversity. We're a great place to work in a number of countries now across Europe. We're a Fortune 2021 most admired company. So I think what we're doing for our teammates and for each other and, and sustaining that culture is really making a difference to how we're performing as a team and a business. And for yourself, Emma, have you had to sort of adjust your leadership style? Because obviously flying around probably Europe before and that being those face-to-face -face conversations, now you're having to sort of do Zoom or Microsoft Teams or whatever you're using. Have you had to adjust your leadership style? Because obviously you're, you're a working mother yourself, so you've had to adjust child care issues and working from home so how's it been for yourself yeah so you know i think one of the things that we've all learned throughout the pandemic is that everybody has their own story and their own set of circumstances right and and some of it's heartbreaking i mean it's been tough and it remains tough for people and and that can be people that are yeah juggling families and and you know the challenges of homeschooling which many of us have had to encounter it can be people that are alone or separated from their families you know, everybody has got their own story and i think you know leading with heart investing in teammates is you know it's not something new and people often say to me you know as a leader what's the most important thing and I always say well fundamentally you've got to care you've got to care about people you've got to be interested in people you've got to want to help people thrive and, and grow and I think that's just been all the more important over the last 12 months the travel has been a bit of a blow for me personally especially stepping into this new role I, yeah. For me, connecting with people and teammates and sharing that warmth and getting to understand people and make sure people understand what's expected of them in the roles that they're doing is really important. And trying to do that over team, I mean, thank heavens we've got the technology, right? Because without yeah. video, you don't sense people's body language and their mood in the same way. You can't see their expressions. So it's difficult to get under the skin of how someone might really be feeling. So thank heavens for technology. But for me now, I am desperate to get out to the countries and, and sit down face to face and, and meet the teammates. You know, it's really important. And I think one of the things, one of the key learnings actually from the last 12 months has been a lot around recognition because I don't know about you, but I talk to a lot of people who tell me that they don't feel like they're doing a great job of anything right now, that they feel like they're not being a great parent or partner, that they're not you know, having enough time to do all the things at work in the ways that they would want to do them. And I think as an employer, we have to be really, really mindful of that, because in the majority of cases, people are doing a great job. And I think we've got to take the time to say thank you, show gratitude, to recognize people, probably even more so than we did previously. I think, you know, taking the time to do that is really important for people's well-being in general. Yeah, I couldn't agree more with that, Emma. I think, you know, pe recognizing people, the work that people have done over the last, not even just recently, the last 12 months, you know, even trying to get through this pandemic, I think is really, really important. So, yeah, completely, um, completely agree. I noticed recently you've opened an office, uh, a new office in Uxbridge. Was that something that was planned before lockdown or is it something that's happened as a result from the pandemic? No, it was planned before lockdown and we moved in there actually during the pandemic. I managed to get down there, you know, a handful of times when we were sort of semi out of, of lockdown. Um, and I guess, you know, the, the main driver behind that really was employee experience we want our teammates to have the best possible working environment for them to succeed and grow so that was a big part of it i think uh, there's also a sustainability angle there that was important to us so you know it doesn't make financial or environmental sense to have office space that's underutilized and you know our our ways of working have evolved tremendously over the years. So now more so than ever, we have flexible working, which again is really important to attract diverse talent. But we had flexible working before the pandemic. More and more of our salespeople spend their time outside 
in front of clients as opposed to, you know, in years gone by when a lot of our selling was done over the, the phone. So we've got more and more people out. So we had fewer people in the office space. And um, so we, we reduced our footprint. There's still room for everybody to go and meet as teams and collaborate and, you know, have their coaching and mentoring sessions. I think that continues to be really, really important. But ultimately, you know, we've got a much more modern, you know, you walk in there, it feels quite different actually to to what we had before when we moved into the previous office it was state of the art it felt really cool and then you know over time you realize that it's a bit tired you walk into the new office and you know, it's all about team working team space collaboration space hot desking and it it feels like a state of the art office environment which is really important fantastic fantastic now i know you're at insight you're sort of quite proud of your track record of encouraging talent diversity yeah. but can you sort of there's some of the initiatives that you've helped drive through the business yeah and you know that there's a lot of things that we do when it comes to uh to diversity and of course you know we, we talk about tech and women in tech gender's not the only aspect of of diversity of course and you know th there are lots of things that we do and for me it starts with leadership as leaders of the business we've got to believe in the importance of diversity and inclusion. We've got to be prepared to commit to that and set clear direction for our organizations. And, you know, for, for us as Insight, we're signed up to um, industry standards. So for example, we are signatories on the Tech Talent Charter, Tech She Can initiatives, which are all designed to improve diversity within the industry. Internally, we have our diversity, inclusivity and belonging group, which is actually headed up by our dedicated DIMB leader. So that's a dedicated teammate who exists to drive our DIMB group to make sure that we are empowering an organization that really does do what it says it's going to do when it comes to diversity, inclusivity and belonging. And that looks at everything from how we recruit to how we communicate to our policies and procedures to how we celebrate uniqueness and, and diversity. You know, this is this is really important to us. And um, as part of that, we have our Insight Ally program where teammates can sign up and pledge their support for the DIMB program and you know, make a, a, a pledge that they will stand out and speak up against discrimination and, and anything that doesn't feel right. And it's all designed to ensure that our culture can continue to grow and, and be the best that it can possibly be. So I think there's lots of things we do internally. I think, you know, more broadly, we all need to be looking at how we recruit talent. You know, um, I've heard you talk before about promotion panels and uh, interview panels. And I think having diverse diversity in that entire process is really important to give really important. it is you know to give candidates the confidence to excel and, and also I suppose if you're interviewing somebody for the first time that's their window into your organization and if you can present a diverse view of your business at that point you again you give them confidence you give them the the understanding of what you're about as a business and an equal opportunities employer and i think it's really really important yeah absolutely absolutely let's bring us up to date now emma so return to work policy yeah. now so what people are going to be looking at your leadership and thinking right what we're going to be doing over and across EMEA, yeah. what is going to be the return to work policy for insight and what is going to be the work from home policy from now on. Yeah, so, you know, it, it, it's interesting, isn't it? And we're seeing lots of organisations come out and publicly say that the future of their business will be remote or, or hybrid working. And, you know, insight will be no different. For me, I think flexible working is absolutely key. As I said before, it's critical to attracting and retaining a diverse talent pool. That's really important. Um, I think, you know, employees' expectations will be that you know, given what we've learned through the pandemic, we all know that as long as you're outcome focused in how you measure the performance of people, people can work broadly from anywhere. And, and we want to make sure that we're supporting that as best we can. Now, we haven't formalized any policies yet. 
Uh, first and foremost, we will be looking at government guide, guidelines coming out of the countries. And I can tell you already, you know, the, the government stance across the different countries in, in Europe varies wildly. So we're staying, yeah, it really, really does, yeah. So we're staying close to the expectations and, uh, you know, some of the laws and, and guidelines that are coming out of, of the government. That will be key to us. And then, of course, we'll be looking hard at balancing i guess the expectation of the teammate giving them the flexibility that they need and want but balancing that with how we still keep our culture alive you know how we still bring teammates together so that we can collaborate you know we can have that team time people can still feel like they're part of something greater and um, all of that is really important to me so i think the future will be hybrid uh, we haven't gone, as I said, with any formal policies yet, but we will be collaborating with teammates across the organisation to figure out how we make that work best for us going forward. Yeah, because you mentioned earlier, and I know it's a, a long time ago when you, you joined that Sheffield <laughs> branch about the buzz of the, the culture. Do you think, though, there will be a, there'll be, the culture will be slightly lost a bit if if it is more of a hybrid in, uh, environment, i.e. most people were learning in the sales environment next to a buddy or next to a buddy system or can ask someone the, the, the water cooler, et cetera, and all those conversations. Now, I know you've got a lot of staff, but do you think if everyone's got the flexibility to work from anywhere all the time, that that could be lost a bit and it'll be harder to onboard and, and attract people? And that's the challenge, isn't it? And, you know, you've heard me say a thousand times already how important our culture is. So how we keep that alive and how we you know keep our teammates feeling like they belong like they're part of the team and um, is going to be really important and one of the things that we've been talking about as a leadership team just in the last few weeks is how do we support our leaders how do we support our managers because you know traditionally our management team was supporting teammates that were office based, you know, and we, we'd educate and developed and grown our managers to be able to do that. Through the pandemic, everybody's had to learn pretty quickly, you know, how to manage people when they're working remotely and with a screen between them. But it's actually a completely different skill set again to be able to manage a team where maybe some of the team are in an office and, and some are working remotely. We're looking at that entire piece to, to ensure that we're ready for it. You know, we're ready to be able to give teammates the flexibility, but still give people that personal touch and, and that flavor of our culture and our values that has made us so successful. So the one thing that I would say that I think will help us is the fact that all teammates across our business see the benefit in our culture and our values. And as I speak to teammates across the business, Broadly, they're really keen to come back to the office. I actually had an email from a, a teammate in Sheffield yesterday. We're still in that same office, by the way, where I walked through the doors 19 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. then, I can tell you it's looking a little bit you know, dated now. And one of the teammates <laughs> sent me a message to say, I can't believe how excited I am to get back in the Sheffield office. I never thought I'd say it, but I'm really excited. And I went back and I said, I couldn't agree more. That office has never felt more appealing. So I'm really keen to, to come together again, to have a coffee, to, to talk about something that, that's different, you know? So I think the future will be different again. You know, it, it absolutely will. We've just got to do everything we can to ready ourselves for that. And this is quite an open question, but I want to get your view on it. What's the what's the sort of the main sort of two or three lessons that you've learned through the last 12 months that you'll take forward now, not just in your leadership, but also for insight in general? Do you think actually we're going to start doing this or we're going to continue doing this moving forward? Um, I did, do you know what? I don't know if if I would say they are brand new things, but they're certainly things that we have put more emphasis on, shall we say. So I would say lots of the initiatives around well-being even some of the fun yeah. things that we've done that we we never did but i mean we've all we all went quiz crazy to begin with didn't we happy hour yeah, crazy on a friday afternoon but i think you know <laughs> as a result we we come closer i mean you know if you think about what we've learned about our teammates and you know our, our colleagues throughout this yeah. process i mean you know you've met people's partners their dogs their you know their pets you've been in people's kitchen you've been in people's bedrooms you know <laughs> But, but in some ways, how wonderful, you know, we've connected on a different, more human level. And I think 
you know, that's opened people's eyes a bit. It's okay to do that. And actually, it's beneficial to be able to connect on, on another level. So I think there'll be some of that that we will naturally carry through. Um, I think the point I raised before around recognition, really, really important. And we've always had a number of different mechanisms at Insight to focus on recognition. So we have a, a values program where teammates can nominate other teammates if they've done a particularly good job or gone the extra mile. Uh, throughout the last 12 months, we've actually invested in uh, a long-term solution, which is a, an online portal where you can go and, you know, within a few minutes, you can do a shout out or a virtual high five to a teammate that's done a great job. And, you know, it's those small things, but they make people feel valued and, and special. I think, you know, other things around uh, flexible working. I mean, I, I guess that goes without saying we've all opened our minds to that. But the important thing yeah. for me is we're not measuring the hours that people work. It's not about seeing somebody sitting at their desk, but it's about setting really clear expectations, measurable outcomes and, and focusing on the outcomes as opposed to the inputs. And I think there'll be a lot of that that we'll, we'll carry through as well. So lots and lots of learnings. And, you know, we've just got to make sure that we reflect on those learnings and continue to, to enjoy the benefits of, of what we've learned. You've achieved so much during your career insight already. Yeah. And I said, I, I said offline, you know, most people, if they got to the MD of Germany or a country, they'd, they'd probably think, oh, stop there. You know, that's, that's fantastic. They've got to the top. Where do you get your drive from? And what's your sort of future ambitions personally and professionally for, for, it, for you and in for insight? Um, where do I get my... Genuinely, I love what I do. I'm so proud to be part of the organization that I'm part of. And it, like any business, for me at least, it's the people. And it's what we stand for. It's the difference that we make together. And I genuinely love it every day. And that doesn't mean it's easy every day, by the way, right? Uh, but I, I, I love it. I love the difference that, that we can make in, you know, not just to, to each other, not just to our clients, but to the communities, to the environment. We've got a real platform in tech, in the organization that I'm part of to, to make a difference. So that's where I get my drive from. Um, I think... Um, you know, in terms of my ambitions, you know, I've got to, I'm back to the beginning again, right? I've got to prove myself in, in the role. I've been back to that, that point again. Sorry. Right? You know, I've got, Sorry, I've got <laughs> connections to me. You've been built again after 19 yeah. years. But, the, but again, that's the beauty of, of the industry, right? Everything's changing. You know, the way we serve our clients is, is fundamentally different today to, to what it was you know, two years ago, let alone when I started in the industry 19 years ago. So we've got to be continually challenging ourselves and, and changing and adapting to market conditions and the needs of our clients. So I think, you know, my my ambitions for Insight are I want to continue to grow us to, to be the solutions and services organization that we're turning into, you know, that we're heavily, heavily strategically focused on making sure that we're making smart investments to ensure that we are best positioned to help our clients where they need us most today and in the future. And, and that, that's really important. That could be anything from helping them optimize costs, making sure that they're delivering their own great employee experience and improving productivity through a robust and secure remote workforce environment. It might be helping them digitally transform to you know, be able to compete in a post-COVID environment. There's, there's a lot for us to do there. To help our clients and then I think from an insight organizational perspective it's about continuing to focus on diversity inclusion and belonging uh, getting a few more external awards and recognition along the way would, would be <laughs> terrific of course as well it's that social piece so we do a lot to support charities and our local communities across all countries I want to see us doing more of that and then finally, you know, the sustainability agenda, really making sure we're doing our bit in terms of our environmental responsibility. I think in tech, probably more so than than a number of other industries, we've got a role to play there. You know, we don't want tech to become the enemy uh, of green. You know, we, we there's a lot we can do there. And I think we put ourselves 
robust, aggressive goals in place to reach carbon neutral. We partner with some phenomenal organizations such as Tree Nation to help us offset our carbon emissions, etc. So looking at the world through that lens is really, really important. Yeah, figuring out how we continue to make a difference in those Mark, is, is my ambition. Brilliant, Emma. Um, my last couple of questions, one of them is, is if someone wanted to emulate your career, and that could be a young you know, junior sales manager in your own firm at Insight or someone outside the industry, yeah. what piece of advice would you give them to make sure they, they, they get to the top? How, how would they do that? If they haven't got a mentor, and you mentioned mentors earlier, because not many people at the moment, I, I don't see many people getting mentors. Yeah. And I think it is a great way of, of but if, if they haven't got a mentor and, they, and they, they're doing a hard job and they're working hard, how, how can they reach the top? I think one of the first things I'd say is go go find a mentor and ask. You know, don't be afraid to ask because, you know, within this industry, there are so many phenomenal leaders and people that genuinely want to help others develop and grow. And, and you know, we all want to nurture talent. You know, um, So I think don't be afraid to ask for support. There's lots of us that want to help people. I think. Um, you know, for, for organizations getting involved in early career programs, by the way, and graduate programs is a great way to attract diverse talent and, and also identify the superstars of the future. I, I think that's a great initiative for any organization. Um, but I think fundamentally, if I had one piece of advice or, you know, one learning, if you like, over the years, it's be authentic, you know, be yourself. Don't feel that you've got to try and fit to what anybody else wants you to be and you mentioned earlier that I you know I worked in very different industries before I came to technology and one of the roles I was in uh, before <laughs> coming to Insight I was part of an organization where they wanted everybody to be the same you know we talk today about celebrating diversity not hiding it there it, you know as, as a woman I had to wear a black suit with a white shirt. You, you wouldn't get away with a, a pink check or a, whatever I'm wearing today, a fuchsia or, or purple top. And no nail varnish, hair tied back. They wanted everybody to look the same. And do you know what happened was people lost their personality. They lost their voice. You lost all that creative flair because you're stifling people's individuality so for me I would say to anybody be yourself you know be proud of your uniqueness and what you bring to the table because that's what we're all looking for today so I would yeah. say yeah you know be yourself be authentic work hard and ask for help where you need it ultimately great and my last question yes. Emma so as you know, I've been keen to speak to you on this channel chat for months and yes. months and months. And both Adam Latham and Stuart Fenton actually mentioned you'd be a great guest, which you have. So thanks Thank for coming on to today. Uh, I wanted to ask you the same question I asked them those those yes. two. Who inspires you in the channel and who would you think would be a great future guest for the channel chat listeners to hear from? Uh, oh, wow. I mean, that's a difficult question from the simple point of view that there are so many inspirational people in this channel. Um, and that's through all levels of organizations, by the way, as well. I mean, I meet extraordinary people every day. Um, yeah, I mean, Stuart's been a great supporter of mine, a great, great mentor. Um, have you, uh, you had the soft cut leadership team on not so long ago, didn't you? Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, Martin Hellowell is a, you know, standout contributor, uh, has, has been for many years. Okay. Graham now, of course, uh, out, out there too. Um, you had Rob Tomlin on a couple of weeks ago. I mean, the list is, is endless. Uh, I tell you who you, could, who you could talk to, especially if you're interested in talking more about diversity. We have a fabulous individual within our organization, Miranda Webb. She actually won Role Model of the Year at the Women in Tech Awards last year. Okay. She is an extraordinary inspiration. We recommend you, you talk to Miranda. She would be a great guest on your show. But uh, genuinely, I'm not, you know, not shying away from the question, but there is inspiration everywhere you look in this industry. Emma, you've been a great guest. Thanks so much for your time.